I had asked Lawson's to organise a one-month trip to the Kruger National Park in South Africa for me. Then asked Keith Dentith, a friend of mine, if he would like to come. Fortunately, he said yes. The Kruger was established in 1926 and covers about 20,000 square kilometres, roughly the size of Wales. The area you see here is about two-thirds of it. So, on the 20th of November 2015, we were flying to Kruger International Airport, wondering what the next month would bring. We would be staying at six camps inside the park, but our first camp, Tom Jackju Bush Camp, was where a couple of species could be found that were not in the park. On arriving, we were met by Lindell from Lawson's, who had organised our car and one or two other goodies. So with our maps, we set off to our first camp. Keith had volunteered to do most of the driving. We soon found ourselves arriving at Tom Jackachew Bush Camp. It is privately owned and the food, we would find out later, was excellent. Keith soon started making lists of species he really must see. About four o'clock that afternoon we found ourselves on our first of three game drives we would have while we were there. This is a small bachelor herd of impala. These two practicing for the real thing. This is a herd of bestbok one of the species we wouldn't find in the Kruger National Park. The mountain reedbuck is the other species that we wouldn't find in the Kruger National Park. She was very shy. The colours on the white fronted bee eater in the late afternoon sun were wonderful. This yellow throated long claw has caught a young snake and doesn't quite know what to do with it.
This morning we leave Tom Jack Tube Bush Camp and head for the famous Kruger National Park and Biomiti Rest Camp, our home for the next three days. About a mile from Melenon Gate, we cross the Crocodile River, well worth a stop. Arriving at Melenon Gate, we had to stop and sort out our paperwork. Again, Lawson's did us proud. Everything went well and we were soon on our way. We spotted this leopard relaxing in the midday sun. Unfortunately, he was a long way off. Arriving at Biomithy Bush Camp, we booked in and it didn't take long to sort ourselves out. Our bush camp lay overlooking the Biomithy River. Unfortunately, it was nearly dry as the rains were late this year, but we did have some friendly neighbours. The next day we were up and away early, about half past four, wondering what the day would bring. We were very excited when we saw these white rhinos. They were nervous, but thankfully they stayed so we could get some footage. Water buck in a dried up riverbed.
elephants spraying themselves with mud to protect themselves against the sun and parasites. This is tree damage done by elephants. They kill the tree for just a few leaves. We had gone down to Crocodile Beach Camp to get fuel and these ecoletted fruit bats were in the entrance roof. Later in the evening we went on a guided night drive and were very pleased we did. This steamboat decided that this was no place for her. This female leopard cub giving her brother a good clean. Everywhere is looking very dry. We really do need rain. This young hyena encouraging her mum to regurgitate some food, but ends up getting a wash. These dwarf mongoose have a territory of about half a square kilometer and scent market using their anal gland. There are up to 30 individuals in a troop. There is one dominant pair that have up to three young and they stay underground for two to three weeks.
We leave early because this is our last full day at Biomiti. We were glad we left early. We managed to film this Pharaoh's eagle owl before it went off to hide for the day. I felt very privileged. I had never been this close to a hippo before. These young lion cubs are waiting for mum to bring them some food. In the meantime, one is trying to eat a leopard tortoise without much luck so far. Clip springers have an amazing ability to walk on very steep rock faces. They have specially adapted hind hooves that have four points of contact. At last, some very much needed rain, but sadly, nowhere near enough. <laughs> we leave our Biomiti camp for the last time and slowly make our way to Lower Sabi our next camp and hopefully see lots of things on the way. We were lucky to find this woodland kingfisher preparing its nest site. It didn't seem to mind after a while. This communal spider's nest may contain many hundreds of individuals and can get very large. This one is quite small. This river course has only a few pools left where elephants and other animals still come to drink. We badly need rain. A lot of women would give their high teeth for eyelashes like these. The building in the background is our restaurant at Lower Sabi, on the southern bank of the River Sabi, the most biologically diverse river in South Africa.
that night we had a wonderful storm, but sadly no rain. Then we saw that it had started a fire in the dried grass quite a long way off. This will be our first full day at Lower Sabi and a new area for us to explore. Seeing this leopard active during the day was a nice surprise. Then she gave chase after a mongoose. I think she missed it. This shows you just how easy it is for these huge animals to destroy a tree. We were very excited to see our first wild dog. They are becoming rare now and can be quite elusive. This tawny eagle has just finished a large meal. You can tell by its bulging crop. This white rhino was a bit wary of us, but seemed quite calm, but you can never be sure. We think this is where we saw grass burning due to the lightning last night. These lions resting with very full tummies, they could sleep for hours.
This huge male lion came right up to the car, walked round it and across the road in front of us. You don't realise how big they are until they are so close you could reach out and touch them. these two male lions preparing to attack a herd of buffalo. When they see the herd coming towards them, they wisely decide to leave. They really need a few females with them. Oh well, perhaps next time. All the big cats leave the water buck alone, unless they are really hungry. When the water buck are attacked, they release a chemical into the skin, which then gets into the meat and makes it taste horrible. The Amur falcon breeds as far away as northern China and returns here in November to overwinter. A quick look at the Sabi River as we head back to camp. There is always something interesting to see. Out early as this is our last day at Lower Sabi. This family of Chakamar baboons out getting breakfast. This male bushbuck having a fight with this bush. He seems quite chuffed when he wins.
this large herd of elephants heading to the river for their evening drink and wash. Heading back to Lower Sabi camp for the last time, I could not resist this scene. As it was our last night at this camp, we put out some old avocados we had, and sure enough, after about an hour, a thick-tailed bush baby arrived. We leave early for our next camp, Satara, but couldn't resist one more look at the River Sabi, and we weren't disappointed. Leaving the river Sabi, we head north towards our next camp. We came across a pack of wild dogs. We counted 20, a very rare sight these days. They seem to be checking for scent marks, but definitely in hunting mode. After following the pack for some time, we saw a large herd of buffalo about 150, so that is what the dogs were after.
it's unlikely they would go for a mature buffalo, unless it was weak, more likely a calf. We followed them for a long while, wondering when they would strike. Then we lost them. You're not allowed off-road in the park, so we could not follow them. And it all happened so quickly. They were there, and then they were gone. We don't think they killed anything because we saw some dogs coming back. This bush buck hears a monitor lizard moving behind her. This male wattle starling is not the prettiest of birds. Unless this poor hippo can find more water, he will die from overexposure. Once we settle in our new camp, we check out some of our garden neighbours. This woodland kingfisher has caught a free-tailed bat. Leon of Lawson's kindly ID'd the bat for me. Away again early, looking forward to what we might see in the Satara area. Nyala are a beautiful antelope with their light brown socks.
This hyena looks as though she has just had breakfast. I said earlier that we needed rain badly. Many rivers completely dry and lots of pools have gone. This one will probably only last about another week if we don't have rain. So these catfish don't have long to live. We head back to camp for lunch and then check out our garden neighbours. This rock monitor lizard lives in the tree just outside our chalet. We head out about four o'clock. It is very hot. As the evening draws closer, these baboons get down to some serious grooming. This poor leopard, struggling with the heat, it is about 38 degrees. We were very lucky when this wild cat came round after dark to see what was on offer. These cats are very shy and very difficult to find being nocturnal. Another beautiful morning but no sign of badly needed rain. The aerobi are quite scarce and very shy. Unfortunately this pair were a long way off. Shouldn't complain though, we were very lucky to see them at all. Wildebeest are the lion's favourite prey.
This honey badger, out hunting to feed its family. They are, in fact, not badgers at all. They belong to the weasel family. They have very powerful front legs and claws for digging when searching for rodents and other types of food. This time he has been lucky. He has caught some kind of rodent and is taking it back to its den where there will be up to two cubs. This male leopard trying to keep cool in the late afternoon heat. It is now about 35 degrees. Notice a porcupine needle stuck in his throat. If it turns infectious, it may eventually kill him. Let's hope not. Out early again, wondering what the day would bring. This area is known for having very pale lions and we were lucky enough to find this magnificent male. We are now finding lots of young impala. They gather together in groups where one or more adults keep an eye on them. Another dried up riverbed. Looks like she has a nice big beetle there. Heading back to camp after a very good day.
Another beautiful morning. Still no rain though. Vultures finishing off the remains of what looks like a young impala. We came across a lion kill. They'd obviously had their fill and this male was trying to protect the remains of their young elephant. That's how you do it, son. As the lions try and snooze in the afternoon heat, vultures and jackals are trying to paint some of the kill. He is going to have to think of another way of protecting his kill. All this running on a full stomach is not good. One of his sons has the answer. Stay by the kill. But that means lying out of the shade. Not good either. In the meantime, other scavengers start to arrive. Like these hyenas, they could pose much more of a threat. Another one of his sons decide to eat some more. Unfortunately, we have to be back in camp by 6.30, so we must leave. But we will return first thing in the morning to see how they get on. We leave at 4.30. It's barely light and spotted this lioness with her three very small cubs. So we just had to stop. When we arrived at the lion kill, we were pleasantly surprised to find the lion still in control. Not a bad achievement, considering they defended it all night. All the usual suspects were still there, but in greater numbers. Wake me up if something happens. In the end, the big male lion decides to move the carcass closer to the shade.
We had spent a lot of time with the lions, but it had been worth it. But now, time to move on and look for other things. It is so hot, 35 degrees plus. Everything is heading for the shade. Can't beat a nice dung beetle. We were very lucky to find this hoopoe feeding young. We slowly headed back to camp for our last night there. In the morning, we would be heading for Litaba rest camp. We left early as usual, so we could see and film as much as possible. We were on our way to Litaba, the most northern camp we would be staying at. We were lucky with these clip springers. They are normally very shy and nervous, but this pair were quite relaxed. They have specially developed front hooves, which allows them to walk up very steep rock faces. Another example of elephant damage. A view of the river Mataba, which is where our new camp gets its name from.
we get to our camp and settle in. Out early as usual, as we have a whole new area to explore. This violet back starling is the most extraordinary colour, beautiful. Later that evening we went on a night drive, the spring hare I had never seen before, so that was good. We left early in the morning and only after a mile or two we discovered these hyenas playing outside their den. Lovely to watch. These dwarf mongoose had two babies and they weren't going to let them out of their sight. Back at camp in the late afternoon, we got to see some of our neighbours. It had been another very good day. Leaving early again, we called in to see our local hyena den.
yet another dried up river. This was the end of our last day at Lataba and we had seen some lovely things. Tomorrow we set off for Oliphant's rest camp, a few miles south. Today we're off to Oliphant's. It wasn't that far, so we called in at the local viewpoint and still being early in the morning, the light was lovely. We stop off at the bridge overlooking the Oliphants River, which is about two miles or so from the Oliphants camp. We were very lucky. The view from our chalet was wonderful, overlooking the Oliphants River. There was more water in it, but still very low. We headed out to explore this new area. This African hawk eagle had just presented his female with this unfortunate tree squirrel. I had never seen a grey-headed bush shrike before, so it was a good bird to end the day on. We headed out early towards the river to see what we could find. The early morning light was just beautiful. We found this pair of little bee eaters feeding young, so we spent a lot of time getting these shots, but it was well worth it.
you can see on this clip springer, the hind hooves have four points of contact, helping them climb steep rocky slopes. The end of another very good day. These magnificent trees can live many hundreds of years and the trunk can hold up to 120,000 litres of water in case of long droughts. On our way back to the camp, we called at the river to see who was there. Leaving early again, we came across this herd of impala, which we could not resist filming. Then, out of the blue, there was an alarm call. There must be a catapult, and there was panic. They all ran, some right alongside our car. One of the reasons elephants have developed large ears is to help keep them cool. On the underside there are a mass of very large veins, so in fact the whole area is used for cooling the blood. This male red-crested Koran telling all the females in the area where he is. These southern ground hornbills settling down for the night in the relative safety of a tree. <laughs> Leaving camp we discover another hyena den. We just had to stop.
this baby giraffe is probably only two or three days old. Unfortunately, we arrived just too late. A cheetah had killed the impala. The lion saw it and chased off the cheetah. Then this female played with it, just like our cats play with their dead mice. We head back to Oliphant's camp for the last time and try to film our little friend who lives underneath us. We're heading for Sakusa, sadly our last camp. Early morning in the baboon household, some are having a lie-in. we came across two lionesses stalking this wildebeest. Unfortunately for them, the wildebeest has spotted them. Ah oh well, breakfast will have to wait. Disappointed, they wander off and have a play. These barn swallows preening after a long migration here for the winter. Wait for me. This wildebeest calf is probably less than an hour old and this will be her first suckle. Looks like there's been a lion kill with all these vultures hanging around. Sure enough, we came across these two with full tummies and in need of a wash.
This is a nice example of an adult male with an immature male Nyala. This plaque shows the three founding fathers of the park. James Stevenson Hamilton became the first warden in 1902. The locals called him Sikusa, meaning he who sweeps clean. Then Paul Kruger, and on the right, Pierre Grobler, Minister of the Interior. We were up early again and off to Lake Panic to see what we could find. This water thickly standing guard while its mate incubates their eggs. These terrapins riding on the back of a hippo. Our last full day in the Kruger, so to see these white rhino was a nice start to the day. It was nice to find another hyena den with pups, you can't resist them. We were quietly filming 
and all of a sudden everything was on the run. Then we spotted it, a leopard chasing something. We couldn't see what though. In the end the female leopard gave up and then just wandered off. Isn't this fun, Mum? Mum keeping an eye on her little one as he practices the art of climbing. This was our very last morning here. By five o'clock we would be on a plane heading for home. We had had a wonderful time and seen many beautiful things, but there was one animal that we really wanted to see, the sable. We had been told there may be some around Numbai Gate area, so that was where we were heading. Of course, we had to stop for these lions. This black-bellied bustard doing his strange call to let the females know where he is. We drove around the area looking for sable. We did see many nice things, but no sable. We ended up back at the gate without any luck and time was against us. Keith said, let's give it one more go. So we headed off. In a few minutes we saw a herd and set out to get closer. It had all been worthwhile. They were beautiful animals and in full sun they looked stunning.
All we have to do now is say goodbye to the Kruger National Park and get to the airport.